So we have seen how to solve triangles that are right triangles. But what happens if our triangles are not right triangles? Those triangles are called oblique triangles, and we have two tools to help us solve oblique triangles, namely the law of sines and the law of cosines. Suppose that we have a triangle ABC with sides A, B, and C. So we'll use capital letters to denote the angles, and we will use the lowercase letters to denote the sides, and these occur in pairs. So side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, and side C is opposite angle C. So if we have such a triangle, then we have this set of equations that is true. So first off, notice that there are three equations. We have A over sine A equals B over sine B. We also have A over sine A equals C over sine of C. And then finally, we have B over sine B equals C over sine C. So when do we use the law of sines? To use the law of sines, we must be able to have an angle side pair. So we will either be given an angle side pair, so we'll, be, we'll know A, the side, and we'll know angle A, or we'll know B and angle B, or C and angle C, or we'll be able to easily find one of those missing angles to form an angle side pair. But we must always be able to find an angle side pair in order to use the law of sines. So knowing that we have to find an angle side pair, this limits our cases for the law of sines to the three cases here, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and side, side, angle. So what does it mean to have angle, angle, side? That means that we know two consecutive angles and then the side that is not included. So for example, we would know angle, angle, and then side. Or we could know angle side angle, and angle side angle would be two angles and the included side. So angle, side, angle. So we see the two angles and then the side that's included. Or lastly, we could know side side angle. Conveniently, we don't put the angle first in the abbreviation. So side side angle would be side side followed by angle. Now you could have it reversed and do side side angle that way. So technically it could be angle side side the order is really not important as long as you're not talking about the included angle, which you'll notice that that's one thing that we don't have here, is we don't have side angle side. That must be a different case. So let's take a look at an example. And I first draw a sketch. My sketch does not have to be to scale. So I'm not looking at trying to make this triangle look like the triangle that I'm actually trying to solve just going to do this to make an inventory. So A, B, C, and then sides opposite. Okay, so we know that capital A is 24.3 degrees, capital C is 54.6 degrees, and C is 2.68. So we will notice that we have an angle side pair. We have a C and a C. So therefore, we must be able to use the law of sines here. In fact, what we have 
is angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So whenever I solve an oblique triangle, I tend to make a table of what I know and what I do not know. So we have our sides A, B, and C. We have our angles A, B, and C. We know that angle A is 24.3 degrees. We know that angle C is 54.6 degrees. And then we know that side C is equal to 2.68. So by doing this, we can readily see that we have an angle side pair. We also know immediately that we can find our missing angle B by using the fact that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So we know that 24.3 degrees plus 54.6 degrees plus angle B will equal 180 degrees. This means that B is equal to 101.1 degrees. Now we can go ahead and use our law of signs to find the remaining information. So we know all the information about the angle side pair for C. So C over sine of C equals, and we'll go ahead and find A first, doesn't really matter at this point which one we find first, A or B, but we have A over sine of A. C is 2.68, and angle C is 54.6 degrees, and so that will that ratio will equal the same thing as A over the sine of 24.3 degrees. Let's multiply both sides by sine of 24.3 degrees, and that will yield 2.68 times the sine of 24.3 degrees over the sine of 54.6 degrees equals A. Now, in your calculator, you'll want to make sure that you put parentheses around your angle because sine will call that angle and it will automatically put the parenthesis at the beginning of the angle and you will need to close the parenthesis. So make sure that you get this by using your calculator and you will obtain 1.35 approximately if we round to two decimal places, as our instructions say. So this is approximately A. So if I come over here to my table, I know A is approximately 1.35. Now how will we find B? We'll go ahead and use Law of Sines again. So we know that the sine or sorry, that C over sine of C will equal B over sine of B. Now I tend to go back and use the pair that I know the most about, and I know I didn't make any errors in this calculation because there was no calculation. This was given, so I know these answers are correct. If I go back and I use my A pair, then this value was a value calculated by me. So if I did that incorrectly, then I, that automatically makes my B incorrect. So use the values that are given to you in order all possible. So we have 2.68 over the sine of 54.6 degrees equals our unknown side B over the sine of 101.1 degrees. 
And again, we can go ahead and multiply both sides by the denominator of the right-hand side. So multiply both sides by sine of 101.1 degrees. And that should equal B. Now let's go ahead and use our calculator to approximate the left-hand side. Again, you want to make sure that you have parentheses around your angles. And so on the left-hand side, we should get 3.23, and that's an approximation of B. So let's go ahead and fill out our table. B is approximately 3.23. So now we have found all missing lengths of sides, and we have found all measures of missing angles. So we have solved the triangle. So now let's look at another example. We have our triangle, and this time it's easy to see that one of our angles is obtuse, so I'll make that obtuse. So there's angle A. Again, you don't have to, at least, I never concern myself too much with making my triangles a scale. Some people may try a little bit harder, but there's, I don't think, any real need to. So ACB or ABC, and then the sides opposite. You'll notice that sometimes I try to make my lowercase c and my uppercase c different by making my c have a little curl on the top of it for the lower case. So now we know that A is 120 degrees and that B is 45 degrees and side C is 16 so that means that we have angle and another angle and the included side so this is angle side angle. So let's take an inventory of what we know so we have sides A, B, and C, and we have angles A, B, and C. And of these, we know that A is 120 degrees, we know that B is 45 degrees, and we know that side C is 16 in length. So immediately, we know that we can find angle C. So angle C can be found by the fact that C plus the other angles measures must equal 180 degrees. So this means that C must equal 15 degrees. And this now yields for us an angle side pair. So we know that C over the sine of angle C equals A over the sine of A, which means that we have 16 over the sine of 15 degrees will equal A, our unknown length, over the sine of 120 degrees. So if we go ahead and multiply both sides by the sine of 120 degrees, we can obtain A and use our calculator, making sure that we're in degree mode and that we put parentheses around our angles. And this yields 53.54 is approximately A. So let's go ahead and mark out what A is in our table. A is approximately 53.54. So now all that's left is to find side B. So we know that C over the sine of C will equal B over the sine of angle B. So this is very much like what we just did for our search for A. So we have 16 over the sine of 15 degrees will equal B over the sine of 45 degrees. 
And so this gives us 16 times the sine of 45 degrees over the sine of 15 degrees equals b. So therefore, we have 43.71 is approximately b. And there is our final answer. So let's look at our next example. Here we have a triangle with an angle of 110 degrees. The side opposite of that 110 degrees is 125 in length. And we have angles B and C. Doesn't matter which one's which. And then side B is the side opposite angle B, and that is given to be 200. So what we have here is side, side, and the angle is not included, so we have side, side, angle. And the thing that we will see with side, side, angle cases is that there is an issue that may arise. So let's take a look at our table of values that we know and do not know. So we have sides A, B, and C. We have angles A, B, and C. And we are given lengths for A and B. Angle A is 110 degrees also. So now let's set up our proportions. So we know an angle side pair involves A. So we have A over the sine of angle A and the only other pair that we know anything about is B. So let's search for B. Angle B that is. So A is 125 over the sine of angle A would be sine of 110 degrees and this equals 200 over the sine of our unknown angle B. So let's cross multiply and we get 125 times the sine of angle B equals 200 times the sine of 110 degrees. This means that the sine of B will be 200 times the sine of 110 degrees over 125. Now let's use our calculator and approximate the right-hand side. And if we do that, this tells us that the sine of B is approximately 1.5035. Now, I went four decimal places here because, not because of this restriction that we're, we're told we're supposed to round answers to two decimal places. This is not an answer. This is on the pathway to an answer. So if I were to actually use this in my calculator, I might just press second, answer, and that will recall the whole string of digits that my calculator has stored, much, beyond, much further beyond um, just these four digits here, these four decimal places. But what we notice here is that this value, 1.5035, is beyond the range of the sine function. Sine must output a value between negative 1 and 1 and 1.5035 is beyond that. So if you were to try to use the arc sign feature on your calculator, this would return undefined. This is outside the range of the sine function, so therefore there is no solution to this triangle. There is no such angle B, so there is no such triangle. So let's look at this example. Here we have a triangle. A is 60 degrees, and we're told that A equals 9, and we have angles B and C, and we know that side C is equal to 10. And so now let's take an inventory, we have A, B, and C and angles A, B, and C. 
And we know that angle A is 60 degrees, side A is 9 in length, side C is 10, and here we again have side, side, angle. So let's set up our proportion. We know that we have our pair A over sine of A must be used, and we must be on the search for our angle C. So we know this will be 9 over the sine of 60 degrees will equal 10 over the sine of C. And again, cross multiplying yields 9 times the sine of C equals 10 times the sine of 60 degrees. And so sine of C equals 10 times the sine of 60 degrees over 9. And again, using our calculator to approximate the right-hand side, this means that the sine of angle C will equal 0 0.9625. Now, if we use our inverse trigonometric function for sine, we know that sine can be positive in the first and second quadrants. Well, that would mean that we could have an acute angle in the first quadrant, or we can have an obtuse angle in the second quadrant. So if we use arc sine of 0 0.9624, this is about 74.24 degrees. So this means we have two cases to look at. So case one would be if angle C corresponds to that value we just obtained, 74 point two four degrees or case two we could have the obtuse angle in our second quadrant so 180 degrees minus 74 point two four degrees is also another possibility so that would be 105 point seven six degrees so again how do we obtain this I took 180 degrees minus the 74.24 degrees. So again, if you just check in your calculator right now, you could take the sine of 74.24 degrees, and that would give us our 0.9624. Or if we take the sine of 105.76 degrees, we will again get 0.9624. So either one of these two is a viable option at this point in time. So we have two possibilities. Let's go ahead now and see how each one of those will fall out. So let's look at case one. Case one, C is approximately equal to 74.26 degrees. If that happens, we now can search for B. We know that angle B will be the remaining angle, and so B will be approximately 180 degrees minus the 60 degrees we were given minus the 74.26 degrees we just calculated, which means that B will approximately be 45.76 degrees. Now this yields for us the ratio A over the sine of A is equal to B over the sine of B, and that means 9 over the sine of 60 degrees will be approximately our side B of unknown length right now over the sine of are 45.76 degrees. Multiplying both sides by the sine of 45.76 degrees means that we obtain B would be 
So let's take inventory for the first case. So case one. We know A, B, and C, A, B, and C. So A equals 60 degrees. We approximated B, angle B that is, to be 45.76 degrees. Angle C we approximated to be 74.24 degrees. Side A was given to be 9. Side C was given to be 10, and side B we just calculated to be approximately 7.45. So let's just take a moment and look at the smallest angle corresponds to the shortest side. The largest angle corresponds to the largest side. So this is one of our solutions. Let's look now at case two and see if there is a second viable solution. So case two. Case two was if C is approximately 105.76 degrees. So if that's the case, then we can calculate B to be 180 degrees minus the 60 degrees we were given minus the 105.76 degrees in this case for C which means that B is approximately 14.24 degrees. Now we can set up our proportion A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B, which means that we have 9 over the sine of 60 degrees is approximately B over the sine of the angle we just calculated to be 14.4 14.24 degrees sorry which means that if we multiply both sides by sine of 14.4 degrees we will get b is approximately 2.56 and there we have our second solution so let's take inventory there so case two A is still 9, B is approximately 2.56, C is equal to 10, A is equal to 60 degrees, B, angle B, is 14.24 degrees, angle C is approximately 105.76 degrees. So let's look at this possible solution. Our largest angle is 105.76 degrees, which corresponds to our longest side. Our smallest angle of 14.24 degrees corresponds to our shortest side of 2.56. And of course, our middle sized angle of 60 degrees corresponds to our mid-sized length. So therefore, this is yet again another viable solution. So this particular triangle had two solutions possible. The thing to remember about triangles that yield no solution, as in the previous example, or two solutions here, is this all stemmed from the fact that this was a side-side angle problem. And it really is seen whenever we take the arc sign of our ratio to determine our angle. So anytime you use the arc sign, you want to be doubly careful. Let's look at another example. So here we have angle A is 76 degrees. And we know that side B is 21, side A is 34, and we do not know side C. So let's take an inventory, A, B, C, angle A, angle B, angle C. 
and we know that angle A is 76 degrees, and we know side A is 34, side B is 21, and we have again side, side, angle. So we have the possibility that something may be interesting here, as in the previous two examples. So let's use our known pair A over sine of A will equal, and then the only pair that we know anything about will be B over sine of B. And so we have 34 over the sine of 76 degrees is equal to B, which is 21, over the sine of our unknown angle B. So if we cross multiply, we have 34 times the sine of B equals 21 over the sine of 76 degrees. This means that sine of B is equal to 21 times the sine of 76 degrees over 34. This means sine of B is approximately 0 0.5993. So arc sine, you'll notice I'm not saying B equals because I don't know B at this point. I know arc sine of 0 0.5993 is approximately 36.8. Two degrees. So this means that we have two possible cases for B. Case 1, B is what we just calculated, 36.82 degrees. Case 2, B would be the angle in the second quadrant that yields that sine value. So 180 degrees minus 36.82 degrees would be 143.18 degrees. So again, if I take the sine of either one of these angles, I end up with 0.5993. So at this point, either one of these is a viable option. Let's now look for our missing angle C. So let's break it down into cases. Case 1, B is approximately 36.82 degrees. And so now we can calculate C as the remaining angle. So C is approximately 180 degrees minus the 76 degrees that was given minus the 36.82 degrees that we just approximated. So C is approximately equal to 67.18 degrees. Now, we can use law of sines to calculate side C. So this means that we have our 34 over sine of 76 degrees is approximately equal to C over sine of C. So C over the sine of 67.18 degrees. By multiplying both sides by the sine of 67.18 degrees, we get C is approximately equal to 32.30. Now what happens with case 2? With case 2, B is approximately 143.18 degrees, which would mean that C is approximately 180 degrees minus the 76 degrees that we were given minus 143.18 degrees, which isn't possible. There's no such positive angle for C, and angles in a triangle cannot be negative. So this means that there is only one possible solution where C is approximately 
point thirty. Angle C we calculated to be sixty seven point one eight degrees. Angle B was thirty six point eight two degrees. So in this and in the previous two examples, we have seen that side side angle can yield no solution, two solutions, or one solution.